Julie Cates was our Outstanding Educator of the Year. She's from Tulare County and is just a star for Ag in the Classroom. Um, she, we met Julie when we had the Seed Survivor um, right. mobile classroom come through California. And um, Julie wrote a song or a poem that she shared with us. And that started kind of our relationship. She was working for mm -hmm. Cooperative Extension at that point in time. And then she became a teacher and she is a wonderful classroom teacher and includes nutrition and technology. Those are her key, at least as far as we see her key points. So Julie, I'm not gonna take any more of your time, but thanks so much for being here and helping us learn about ag. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Judy and everybody at Ag in the Question for having me. And I want to, of course, thank the farmers because um, they are like the ultimate in scientists and entrepreneurs because they teach kids the value of um, having an idea, acting upon it, using evidence-based um, learning and statistics, trial and error, perseverance, just all of the qualities that we want to instill in 21st century learners. And I wanna thank all of the people attending today because um, you're the Saturday teachers, right? You want more for yourself and for your kids. And so you're here and I appreciate you. And I appreciate you because I'm a teacher and I'm here. So um, I'm going to be sharing screen in a few minutes or about two minutes um, with a presentation that you will have access to at the end. And um, each of the screens has live links. Um, so they're called hyperlinks and they will take you to the places that you need to go. But, and so there's like three key things that I wanna talk about today. Um, leveraging uh, Google, I wanna talk about Google for a minute, not as much as Dr. Um, Nato Browning will talk about later, but a little bit. I want to talk about leveraging social media and I wanna talk about some tech platforms. Um, but I really want you to come away with three key ideas. And so I know I can't have everybody unmute and repeat after me, but um, with technology in the classroom, there are like three essential things. One is there will always be glitches, <laughs> always. Like this morning, it's a nightmare. Um, but you have to laugh at yourself or have the kids laugh with you. you have to just keep laughing through it. Don't cry, okay, don't cry. They don't know what you don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Don't worry about it. And then the last thing is like, do not be a grumpy, grumpy sourpuss about it. It'll all get worked out. Like don't yell at the district or the state or the governor like everybody wants to do. <laughs> you can fix it, it's fine. It's just tech, no big deal. So this is my little, my little add on for that, okay? There will always be glitches, just laugh in stitches and remember no witches. I'm going to ask you that at the end. So, okay, I'm going to share my screen, I hope. And pray for me that this all goes well because I've practiced it, but you know, there's always glitched. Okay, so we'll start with the presentation. I'm going to set my timer as well because with tech education in the virtual classroom, um, there's evidence that suggests you really cannot go longer than 20 minutes before you need to give kids a break. I know that for me, we are in a virtual situation where our day is split in half. I have half of my um, students for two hours and 45 minutes, then a break, and then the other half for two hours and 45 minutes. On Zoom, 14 sixth graders at a time. It's very challenging. So, um, you got a little bit about me from Judy. I was in um, ag education with UC Cooperative Extension. And then I decided, well, I'm gonna become a classroom teacher. Why? I don't know, <laughs> but here we go. Um, I'm going to talk about social media because it's a super important platform and a lot more farmers are getting on and that's good news for us. So the whole thing started because of Twitter and Twitter for me started about 2012 because I followed Rose Hayden Smith, the victory gardener you guys saw already, or she's coming up, can't remember. And um, she was taking a White House tour. So that's why I got a Twitter account. And then um, I started reading all the nutrition things, of course, for my job. And 
um, I started following a mommy blogger. And so um, that was called the produce mom at that time, Lori Taylor. And then she bought the business herself and became the produce moms. And so I, when I became a teacher, I reached out to her and said, hey, can I borrow your name, find your favorite Friday? Because I wanna incorporate um, tasting fruits and vegetables in the classroom. And so anyway, this, then I applied for a, a Literacy for Life grant with Ag in the Classroom and it just morphed um, from then. And so I have now um, whittled it down to Try It Tuesdays. And so every um, Tuesday we try a new fruit or vegetable in the class. But my principal was stick, strict on standards and I couldn't just be like, hey kids, let's have strawberries. <laughs> I had to incorporate standards and um, so I'm going to show you on the next slide how I do that. But I want to drive home that I give kids education about how something grows. And then um, I might use the Produce Moms um, Produce Challenge calendar to drive that like on Tuesday. This particular Tuesday was mushrooms. So we learned about mushrooms. Um, I talked about it on camera. And then I was lucky enough to have kids send in pictures like, look, Mrs. Cates, this is me making mushrooms. And so you just don't quite know your influence, even from over here on this side of the screen. Um, I talk really fast, I'm gonna try and slow down. <laughs> so it's important to be a little bit over the top on the screen because if you're the kind of speaker that's like, well, today we'll be talking about mushrooms and their fungi and don't eat them kids in the grass, then you know they are not going to be interested. They're not going to want to know why is it a fungus? How does it grow? What should I cook it with? So it's important to kind of have a background first. Um, so that's going to lead me into, so I have a relationship obviously with the produce mom and um, I do use her calendar to sort of expose kids and drive them because we are in a virtual environment so they can't actually taste the food or, um, as the, the grocer said earlier, like I can't make my room smell like oranges because we don't have smell -o zoom um, yet. Maybe one of our kids will invent that. Okay, so um, first and foremost, you really need to collect some data from your kids. And so I utilize Google Forms for that. Now this summer I did all of the prep to take the Google certification test, but I didn't take the test because we launched into virtual learning. And as many of you know, that is a beast. I'm working more hours now than I ever did before. So I have, I'm not Google certified. I'm not an expert in that, but it's very user friendly. Um, in this slide deck presentation, so a slide deck is similar to PowerPoint that you can receive a copy of, you will find links into how to create Google Forms. And in order to have access to Google, you'll need a Google account, a Gmail account. And once you have the account, in your upper right corner, you'll see like a waffle, and that will lead you to all of their applications or apps. And so I'm going to just share with you now a sample of what I have created. These links here take you directly to Google instruction how to create Google Forms. This is a link to a video that I made for you of all the ways that I use it. And I'm hoping that we have enough time to go over those, but I wanna be mindful of questions. So this is the first. I like to collect data because I might need it for grant funding or just for general knowledge. I have to prove that I've done something with the kids this year. So I created a pre and a post. Um, it, yeah, it kind of lets them know that um, I love ag and I'm interested in cows. I love cows, I love cow jokes. I get a lot of those. Um, and then I ask them general questions. When you're creating a Google form, you have the option, this asterisk means it's required or not so that the kids cannot move on um, until they answer those questions. And so, the idea is that I want to correct pre-knowledge. What do they know or not know about agriculture? And these are the questions that I've asked. You can ask your own. You can set up all your own things. Google Forms allows you for true, false, multiple choice, 
Likert scale, um, short answer, and long text. So um, these are the things. Of course, you would be surprised how many um, sixth graders do not know that all mammals produce milk. Um, they don't know about pasteurization. They don't know about what contained in milk. Um, the most interesting thing that I found was we are surrounded by dairies and they do not understand how important dairies are economically to our county. So that's a whole nother thing I do in spring. And um, the thing that they were most curious about was super interesting because it was a variety of answers. I can't share that with you because then it gives the student name and I can't do that publicly. But um, a couple of kids were just interested if the farmers take care of the cows, like do they care for them? So, you know, they, you don't know what's going on in the mind of the kids. Now, today, a lot of what I'm telling you happens in sixth grade, but I, I'm going to show you some options for the littles because I have a first grade buddy teacher and I am very mindful of that. The littles learn differently than sixth graders. Even third through sixth have access to tools different than, than the littles do. Um, you can choose to use a lot of images when you're creating a Google form. So let's, um, let's just create one together quickly. I will show you how that works. So again, do you see that I have a waffle here? And so I would like to go to, let me move our picture. I would like to go to forms. And I hope I'm not talking over people that already know everything. So I'm going to be brief, maybe two more minutes on this topic. But I can create a form. And for the littles, um, let's just do that. Let's just call it for littles. Um, and we'll put a description in there, mostly graphics. Okay, when I'm asking the littles questions, when I'm designing a form for them, I'm going to keep it very basic, like um, which letter and then maybe I'll insert a graphic. So you can, not, you can have not text and you can insert graphics here as your choice. You can browse from your own computer file or from the web. Okay, so back to mine. You can also change the theme. They have several preset themes. They happen to have this farm one, which I liked for my pre-AUG study. Hope I'm not talking too fast. I'm not sure, Judy, if we agreed if people had questions, I would stop before I moved on to a new topic. I want to be mindful of that. Yep, I think that if they have questions, they'll put them in there. And I think you're doing great, Julie. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I also like Google because um, you don't have to save every 10 seconds. It saves for you. You can share your documents. This is a slideshow or a slide deck presentation, and um, I made copies of them. I'm not sharing anything that's original because it can all be changed live in the drive. Uh, on the Google form, I can send it, I'm sorry, that's a live version. I can um, send it a variety of ways. I can send it via link or via email, and I can choose for people to collaborate with me, to view only, or to respond. And when they respond, I can collect their email addresses, which I do for my classroom because then I know how many kids have answered or not and which kids and which answers. So on a pre and a post, that is an ungraded assignment, obviously, but if I'm giving them a quiz on pasteurization, then I'm going to collect that data. Okay, the next um, phase that I wanna talk about. That's just a snippet on Google. Again, I'm not a Google expert. I think Browning is going to show you a lot about creating hyperdocs and Google Bitmojis and I'm not a Bitmoji teacher. I would like to be, but I'm not. So I'm going to learn from Browning today. Okay, social media. Social media is more than like on a page. It's a lot. Um, it's more valuable than you can know. 
So again, see, I want to tell you a little bit about Google. I shared with you a copy of my original because you're going like, whoever knows how many people will have access to this page and I don't want it um, to be altered. This is a little caveat. I am not very active on Facebook. I was having troubles following the conference this morning. It's just not my medium. Um, Twitter and Instagram are. So I've created for you live links of people that I strongly suggest following. Um, of course, Ag in the Classroom, my favorite. Woo, woo. So of course, we're going to follow them. But uh, I'd also like to introduce to you California Bountiful Magazine. So if you are not familiar with them, get familiar. It's like a $10 a year subscription. It's part of Farm Bureau. I have loved it before I was even involved with Ag in the Classroom, just because it has beautiful photos of farms, anything new that's happening in technology or farm, the ag industry in California. Um, and I had a dream come true last year and I got to be in the magazine. So anyway, um, I do love it though. Really? I, yeah. Oh, oh sorry, I, I hate to interrupt you. There is a question in there okay. that asks before we move on, how often do you use your form quizzes and do you keep it a certain length of items? That's a great question. I, I can use the same ones every year if I pull them out of my drive. And the amount of questions would depend upon your grade level. I'm in sixth and depend upon the content that you are trying to assess, right? So that would just depend. Sometimes a Google form could just be a quick three, three word thing. I've also used it with um, when I'm live face to face, I do a lot of group project-based learning. And so I'll use Google Forms as a way to, for them to choose their groups. So I won't give very much information about the group, only what it does. And it's like a private selection tool because they will choose what they really want to be in and not what their friends tell them to be in because they're all logged in and they're just choosing and answering like that. There's a time limit and then I see. So the questions depend on what you're trying to assess you can keep it forever. You can make a copy of it and alter it only slightly. Is that, if I, I wish I could see you and I could have a thumbs up, thumbs up if you, if that makes sense. We don't know, okay. Um, I lost my train of thought, but where was I? Um, Google Forms, let's see. Sorry, uh, Julie. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. See, I'll try and hold up some of the just questions. Just remember, all the glitches. Oh, wait, oh, oh. The stitches, no witches. Okay, Julie, Julie, we have three requests for people from people asking you to hold that sign up nice and steady so they can copy it. What's it, what's it say at the top again? It says always glitches, tech always has glitches, laughing stitches, and no witches. Very good, thank you. Men teachers too, right? Don't be yep. grouchy, no grouchy guesses allowed. Right. All right. I'm going to step out for a little bit again. And you okay. Carry on. Okay. Down so, um, the, I'm getting back to social media. So these are some strong suggestions I have for you. Um, on Twitter. So they're separate columns because Twitter is different than Instagram. I have found that Twitter is very user friendly for teachers. A lot of teacher resources for free happen on Twitter. Um, and you can customize who you follow. So I am, I don't do any of the politics or any of those things. I follow lots of farmers. I follow lots of educators and a lot of tech experts are on um, Twitter that I follow, but these are all in relation to ag. So Cal Ag Today is timely news and ag alerts. That's really important to follow them. Um, I follow the West Side Farmer he is a prolific farmer in the, on the west side of Kings and Fresno counties along five. And he um, is very active in the ag um, political community as well. And I really trust his judgment. Um, he grows melon and asparagus and almonds. And he has a fruit stand now on Highway 5 that's like super legit. You can stop by. Um, I follow almond girl Jenny, um, whom I adore. So that is a woman owned business. She's also very politically active. I think she's on the Farm Bureau board. 
and um, she's just amazing and fun to watch and get news from on Twitter. I, the Instagram side I will share in just a moment. This is, when you click on these, these will go directly to the, their Twitter links, Twitter pages, Twitter handles, I'm not sure. And um, so this is, um, this is my friend, Zach Green. He is a citrus um, nurseryman at WN Citrus. And so he's also active in the California Citrus Research Board. Very helpful and informative for teachers. Um, Dr. Rose Hayden Smith, the Victory Gardener, why I joined Twitter at all. True Food TV, um, which we are going to talk about extensively in a few minutes. The Produce Moms, of course. And I wanna mention they um, are teaming. So everyone in ag tries to collaborate and work together. And the Produce Moms is teaming with um, more and more farmers and um, Nature Ripe developed a virtual farm field trip for them with lots of teacher um, support resources. And we're trying, I'm helping them a little bit trying to align with national standards, but definitely there are some second and third grade easy peasy things lined up in there like letter writing for thank yous, letter writing to the farmers, um, geography, basic geography of the United States, which is fourth grade as well, or fifth grade, I'm sorry, as well. Um, on the Instagram side, Instagram, as you may know, is more about photos and quick stories. So I think it's similar to Facebook, but different. So they can have a post below with a lot of words and people can comment, or there can be a story in the circle at the top. And those last 24 hours. Um, so of course, egg in the classroom, and of course, California um, Bountiful. But I also love, love, love Produce Moms and True Food TV, Almond Girl Jenny, Wind Citrus, Faces of Egg. So I'm going to go a little bit slow now. So Produce Moms I love because um, we share, we both share like tastes of the day or tastes of the week. She works with or they, it's the, an organization, they work with all kinds of um, ag commodity producers and they have contests for the general public. And you can enter to win free lettuce or cookbooks, things like that. Um, True Food TV is a YouTube channel. How Does It Grow uh, is a series and Nicole Jolly is the primary founder and she posts a lot of great tidbits this summer about gardening. Um, the how does it grow videos are longer and I will get to that. Almond Girl Jenny is amazing. She, um, let me back up for a minute, sorry. I have personal relationships with all of these people because I'm not shy. <laughs> and I feel like when you're a teacher or a mom, you can just stop anyone and say, look, I have these you can just fake it like I have these kids that are interested, even though you're the one that's interested. And then people respond. And so um, Produce Moms I reached out to, True Food I reached out to, Almond Girl Jenny. I just messaged her, private messaged her one day on Instagram like, hey, can I have a, can we have a meet? Can I have a Google Hangout with you? That was before we had Zoom in the classroom. And can we watch your farm? And and she was said, sure. And so she just used her iPhone out in the orchard. And I was able to develop a whole lesson feedback after that because kids wanted to know, well, how many almonds are in your tree? Okay, I am stopping us because it's been 20 minutes. And if you are at home, I would like you to get up because you need a slight break. Ah! Everybody is up. Everybody's up and moving, just like in the classroom. Just for a minute, cross your media line. Get your brain going. Everybody's alive. We'll be back in our seats in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So there you go. I have just proven that we have to be active every 20 minutes because otherwise we're going to lose our kids. And yes, I am that goofy in my regular class because I want engagement. Okay. I need the kids um, focused on the lesson. 
All right, so the WM Citrus, um, Zach Green, is also a prominent farmer that I just reached out to on Instagram. I messaged him and I said, wow, that's really cool. He had some process. Can I learn about that? Would you mind talking to my class? And he said, sure, of course. And then ever since then, um, he's been amazing. He brought citrus to my school. He sends me videos of the, um, the process where they heat up seeds to get them to germinate and um, the whole thing about grafting with citrus. And so um, I'm going to get to Ed Puzzle and Flip Grid, but I use Ag in the Classroom Ag Fact Sheets as a primary, I, I download the PDFs and even now virtually, I have a, um, our district uses a process called CAMI and I can download the Ag in the Classroom PDF fact sheets in CAMI and the kids can annotate and highlight on their own because I use it for informative writing. And so I will utilize the Ag in the Classroom Citrus Ag fact sheet and then have a um, Google Meet or a Zoom Live with the Citrus guy. And then after I might have um, a Flipgrid response. So that would be a non-writing response. And then I always have a writing response where I create a Google, a shared um, Google Doc, which I can also use in my new LMS platform, Schoology, where the kids write a thank you letter to the farmer. And then I snail mail it because that is super important for them to recognize. And in their thank you letters, I always make them include three things that they learned and um, something that they would like to know. And so that's been a really positive response for me. Now, faces of ag, that's my new favorite to follow on Instagram. And I am in love with um, local farm mom. She's in Ohio and farming miles. He's a young guy, um, dairy farmer. And like, I can't get enough cow videos. So late at night when I'm not done with my grading, I like to watch the farming videos. And they've also been very responsive to me. Um, Oak Barn Beef and um, Five Mile Ranch California Beef are both great stories to follow on Instagram because these are both women-owned businesses and you really get to see how cattle is taken care of and how much respect they have for the animal. And I've ordered beef from Oak Barn Beef because I've been following Hannah since she was um, just a wee young college student and she just graduated and um, I wanted her product. I feel almost, um, it sounds so like hippy dippy, but almost Native American because she cares so much for her cows and the process that I feel like the beef is better. Like I'm okay eating that beef. I know that sounds really silly, but that's what I do. So I order her beef now. I should order locally from Five Mile Ranch, but I already have a relationship with Hannah. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and then my last important link for teachers is Dr. Erica Colon. It's called Nitty Gritty Science. She has a lot of great resources all the time, and she has some actually non-self-published um, texts with physics activities for kids that you can do um, on your in your classroom on Zoom and they can do it at home. Like one is making a, um, yeah, what are those things called? Hello, hologram, um, hologram out of your cell phone. Not all kids have a cell phone, so I haven't tried it yet because I have a high poverty district, so I don't want to embarrass anyone. Okay, any questions about social media? No? Okay, here we go. So um, I am not a tech expert. As I said, I don't know how to get rid of this dumb thing. I've been playing around with it for days and there it disappears and comes back. So somebody else can tell me. And just remember to like leverage your friends, leverage your friends, teenagers, anybody that can help you. It's all, it's all good. Um, I would like to talk about the most important um, things that I'm passionate about are the tools. So, and again, you will receive um, all of this. You can have access to it. So when you receive this page, you will also receive a video tutorial of how to do everything that I'm going to show you briefly right now. 
because you know when you're watching something like oh a great idea and then you forget so you can come back to this and watch it over and over again or not <laughs> okay so this is nicole jolly she has a true food true food tv series on youtube called how does it grow and if you are not familiar with nicole she's awesome and fun her videos are like um, part documentary part edutainment part virtual farm tour um, there's humor their graphics they're just super fun you can learn all about her in her bio and click on that link and what I'd like to show you is I can't just show a video right just like the produce moms I can't say hey kids we're going to have mushrooms I have to have a reason I have to substantiate what I'm doing and in virtual learning we really want to make everything as interactive as possible because right now you're watching me flat on a screen and it's not so exciting. I've done a little science in front of them, a little ooh-ah, but it's not the same um, live, right? So what I want to do is take a video of hers and make it interactive with the students. And to do that, I use a program called Edpuzzle. So here is, I'm gonna play it because it's a minute. It's a short video on what Edpuzzle is. Want to create amazing video lessons in minutes? Edpuzzle is your missing piece. With Edpuzzle, you can choose from the millions of videos available from YouTube, National Geographic, TED Talks, Khan Academy, and more. You can also reuse ready-to-go video lessons made by other teachers or upload your very own teaching video. Then, use Edpuzzle's video editor to create your perfect lesson. Embed your own questions to check your students' understanding, cut sections to show your students only the most important parts of the video, and even record voiceover so you can explain concepts in your own words. Once you've finished, you can assign it to your students in just one click and prevent skipping to make sure your students don't miss a thing. When you want to check in on your students' progress, use Edpuzzle's hassle-free analytics to get all the information you need see who still needs to watch the video, what your students responded, and their total scores. So remember, with Edpuzzle's free platform, you can make any video your lesson. Okay, I am going to show you more than just that, but I wanted to show you that, and I wanted you to notice that because I have a free Edpuzzle account, um, when I open a YouTube video, this edit with Edpuzzle, um, icon will appear so I can so that I can change videos right away that I pull up on YouTube and that's important because um, there were some things on the right side when I opened that I've never opened before and if I'm in the classroom or if I'm projecting sharing a screen like this I don't want any weirdo things to be popping up over there that are not appropriate for children or I don't want the ads or maybe I don't need the whole video I just need um, Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, just the middle of it. I don't need the whole video documentary from the History Channel, I just want the speech so I can cut it to just that. So what I do is I check out her full inventory. Oh, let's see what happens here. I could have made a mistake already. Okay, so this is Nicole Jolly's um, website on YouTube, or excuse me, her link on YouTube. And these are the, like an inventory of all of her videos. Now, some are based on farm visits and then others were her um, gardening tips this summer. So I would only be looking at farm visits. And what I'd like to show you is what it looks like inside it when I open one and try to edit it. Before I do that, I'm so sorry, I forgot. If you go to Edpuzzle, look how user-friendly it is for everyone. So you can just go to edpuzzle.com for teachers. I have taken all of their courses and I'm Edpuzzle certified, but you can do that as well. Um, I just like to know, I'm hungry to know everything, so I'm always doing crazy things like that. All right, so let's go to hers for example. And again, this will be brief, but there is a tutorial for you in the, um, slide deck that I'm giving you. So 
let's say it's chickpea that I want to use because in sixth grade we study ancient cultures and um, chickpeas are garbanzo beans or hummus and so this one was particularly helpful to me. So I'll open it. Five years ago there was barely a farmer in America who knew how to grow these things. Today they I have to stop her from talking, Sarah, because we're live. So I will open it and add puzzle. Now it automatically, I didn't log out, so it went to my account. So I'm all in here and I'm going to show you about this as we go. So um, I've already watched the video, previewed it. I've taken notes on what can I ask the kids and I start watching it. 25 blah, blah, years blah. ago, there and was then I say, a farmer oh, in America who knew how to I'd like to things. add a question. Today and then I type in my question and um, then I save it. I'm gonna cancel because I don't want that. I'm gonna save it. They can't get them in the ground fast. Or I can go along and add a note. So recently we had this amazing TED Talk video from a um, Dr. Nadia Mason, a physicist, but she had a lot of high-end vocabulary. So we put in, we, we edited with Edpuzzle and put in notes like a nanoscale is measures nanometers, what are nanometers. So you can put in notes, you can put in voiceover, um, multiple choice questions. Then when you are finished with those things, you're going to um, click finish and you can assign it. So this is the best part teachers. We, if you have Google Classroom, you can go straight to Google Classroom. It's great. You've already um, loaded the kids in. My, well, I have this year. So if I click assign, it's already, when I hit finish, it already saved it into my content library, which I will show you. But if I want to assign it, I can assign it straight to my Google Classroom. Or I want this, I want the closed captioning on. I always want the closed captioning on because it has a variety of languages. I choose English, especially for my ELs, because I want them to hear the word spoken and also see the words in the sentence structure. So I can just assign to a class or um, I can find it in my content and put in an LMS. So let's look at my content. So this is what Edpuzzle looks like. It has a general content. You can search up theirs or like videos that I've made might be in the public general if you want to find one. They're a wide variety. I could look just on what teachers have saved in my school. I can search videos in um, Edpuzzle, YouTube, Khan Academy, National Geographic, all the things that they said are there for you. This is my content. So I will show you just in a moment how we used one already this year for potatoes. But I wanted you to see over the years, now I pay extra at this time for larger storage, but as soon as I get enough teachers at my school to be on board, then I should have some free storage. So I have a lot of videos and I want you to see if you can I spy with your, your special eye. I even use Ag in the Classroom videos. So this one is um, about logistics and transportation. And I only put in two questions because I had just two math questions at the time that I needed to ask my kids. So it's, it's amazing and helpful, I love it. All right, so go to the top. So this year, um, the potato was on the Produce Moms Produce Challenge calendar and she had a recipe for apples and potatoes and onions just sauteed, it's fabulous, I tried it. And um, I wanted the kids to know that potatoes were more than just a potato and they have a whole, on the Produce Moms website, they have this whole thing about power up with potatoes. There are two podcasts available from the Idaho Potato Farmer. I know we're in California, but I'm just saying. And um, I knew that Nicole Jolly had a potato video. So I found the potato video. And do you see all of these like water drops down here? Those are all questions that I asked that I stopped the students. They have to stop and answer. They cannot move on because it has to be interact, interactive. They can't just like, they're already sitting at home. They've already been off school for months, months and months. I don't want them to just be like, oh uh, yeah, another video. I need them to interact with it. 
So at this point, and I don't know why the closed captioning is not on at this moment, it should be. Up to this point, they have learned about how this farmer grows potatoes and whether or not the um, chip manufacturer uses potatoes from a variety of farms or a single farm. And I'm not going to tell you because I want you to watch the video and find out for yourself. So they will have to answer. They can rewatch the video to find the answers. Now I'm an educator, I'm reviewing this video so I can skip, I don't have to be stalled here. Every inch of potato makes about 20 slices, each one just 50 thousandth of an inch thick. Now they're ready for the fryer. The chips. So the students have watched the video and I'm going to relate this video of course to ag, right? That's my whole secret agenda. But I have to cover my curriculum topics. So we are studying um, um, equivalent ratios. So they had just heard there were 20 slices per one inch. So then they need to figure out how many slices in four inch. And when I was doing this process, making these videos for you, I realized as an educator, I could have been more clear and said, use your um, equivalent ratio table or please check your math notes or, <laughs> But it's the beginning of the year, and as I said, there are always glitches. You have to laugh in stitches and no glitches. Okay, so I'm going to skip that. Dips cook for just a couple minutes in a vat of... And I applied it already. Let me think what else I need to tell you to review. So we'll go to... Oh, it does grade for you. If you... um put in your true and false. You have to sort of supply it the answers and then it will um, grade it for you. I would like to show you quickly, I can't see your hands, but we are not using Google Classroom this year, unfortunately. Um, we have to use uh, an LMS or um, learning management system called Schoology. And I, it has Edpuzzle. So I will just choose it. When I choose to make the assignment with Edpuzzle, it goes straight to my content and I just select it and use it. So just like th actually three more steps than Google Classroom, but I still have it available to me. Okay, now, um, so sorry, skipping around. Beside, uh, Judy, do, are there any questions? Cause I want to move to Flipgrid. Yes, yes, there are a couple questions. Okay. Is um, Edpuzzle a free site? Yes, Edpuzzle is free for teachers. Free um, for teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't, I'm not sure if you have to use your school email or not, but yes, it's a free service for teachers. Okay, and Cheryl offers that she would love to know Julie Kate's referral code for Edpuzzle so she can help you get more memory on your account. Oh, that's awesome. Can, yeah. I do that off, can I do that offline? Because that would take me a minute. Yes, you betcha. You up. betcha. Okay, and, so. It, and then uh, Mrs. Newton wants to know if you can import it into GC. Yes, you can. You, okay. don't need, you don't need to import it into Google Classroom because you can just assign it there. So when you're setting up your Edpuzzle account, you import this year's class into Edpuzzle. I mean, it's all very seamless. So Very for, good. Mm -hmm, for a couple of years, I was, we had a um, Google Classroom, but. So everyone else is just saying, this is awesome. So many great ideas I'm getting from this. I love those videos on YouTube. I just put links in my Google Classroom. So yeah, on Julie, good job. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so we love True Food. We love Edpuzzle, Egg in the Classroom. We're gonna use that now because we can. Um, so the other thing that I really like to do is I use a service called Flipgrid. I hope I put the right link in here for you. This is your basic um, information. So Flipgrid is also free. So all of these things used to not be free, but um, they've wised up. So Flipgrid was purchased from Microsoft and so it is now free. So you can just go to educator sign up and um, sign in and create an account. So let me just show you what um, Flipgrid does. Flipgrid, so Edpuzzle is a video editing platform and Flipgrid is a video 
producing platform in which kids um, create selfie videos. So you are creating a topic, you're putting in your guidelines, you can put in rubric scores, so that like oral presentation scores or content scores. I love using Flipgrid for math because then I can really see the kids thinking. They have to demonstrate how to multiply multi-digit or whatever it is. Um, but, and you can use it for read aloud. So I know there's a lot of reading sources now, but you can have kids read aloud to you and then you can check for um, automaticity and errors and things like that. What I wanna show you, which is in the resource guide, so hopefully I can find it quickly. I've been a Flipgrid, oh my gosh, it's break time. Should we dance again really quick? Just like two seconds, two seconds. Two seconds we'll dance, that's it, because we gotta go. There you go, everybody up, everybody up. Do some exercise, there you go. There you go, okay. So we have them moving, that's it, that's all they need. Sixth graders get bored there. They're challenging. Um, I don't know about the littles. My best buddy, she has a first grader, so I think it's also very hard. But luckily in first grade, you can get away with a lot more dance parties than sixth grade. Okay, so I'm going to go back a few years to show you a really great one in which um, my student, we used an activity. We used Ag in the Classroom, Ag Fact Sheets. We... Hope I'm in the right place. I did link it live for you. Um, I mean, link it live. I did link it in the um, in the resource guide. So just bear with me one moment while I find it. Thought it was that year. We used the we used like everything we could use. We used California Ag in the Classroom Ag fact sheets on cucumbers. We watched how does it grow true food TV video on cucumbers with a puzzle. We, and then we created cucumbers in our class. I, this is something I do every year. I'm not sure how I'm gonna be able to do it this year because I don't wanna ask kids to have boiling water at home, but we'll see. Um, we made pickles in the classroom. And then after that, they had to reflect on the whole project. So I really did think it was here. So let me just look again real quick because I wanted you to see that the student, um, I apologize for this delay. I had it lined up and ready, but okay. Here we go. We had another Ag in the Classroom grant in which we utilized food to incorporate with ancient cultures. And so this example that I'm gonna show you of a Flipgrid is, um, kind of the best. And in the past few weeks, we got to try and taste Egyptian pickles. It was a really fun experience. Three facts about pickles are, one, pickles are actually cucumber just marinated in vinegar. Two, cucumbers, which are used for making pickles, are grown in a Mediterranean climate, like what the climate is in the Central Valley. So that means that we grow pickles right here in the Central Valley. Three, the Egyptian goddess Cleopatra thought that pickles enhanced her beauty, so she ate them to make her look better. Okay, that right there is from an ag in the classroom ag fact sheet. So the influence is amazing. The experience of making pickles was so much fun. Two things that I loved were, one, having to decrease the recipe showed us a really cool skill that would actually be used in real life. And the second thing that was great about the experience of making the pickles was, Two, it was amazing how we each worked together as different table groups to each have a different part and then to try those pickles that we made by ourselves. Bye. Okay, so that's like the best of the best in Flipgrid. I mean, that was an amazing year. I had these, um, I called them the STEM girls. I had three girls that were just unbelievable in math and science. And so this is kind of the best of the best, but you get the idea that Flipgrid is this tool especially for the littles um, because they can't write yet, but they can respond and they can show you um, their math and they can show you their ELA. They can show you their favorite picture book. Uh, you can send things at home. You, once you create, once the student has created a video, 
And you can have this moderated so that they can respond to each other or not respond to each other. I choose to moderate and not respond because I have sixth grade and I need them to be nice this time of year. <laughs> well, once they're more mature, we'll let them respond to each other. Um, but you can copy the link and send it home to parents. So we had, you know, um, Veterans Day flip grids. And so then they could send a heartwarming message to their family that they created on Flipgrid. Um, so, but how I use it for agriculture is for them to reflect on an experience we had. Uh, particularly if I've had a virtual farm tour experience, I collect those and then I can send um, the best ones to that farmer. And so uh, last two or three years ago, I had a Google Meet with um, Miss Nicole Jolly from True Food TV. And it was really great because the kids looked at her as like a YouTube star. <laughs> And um, they created Flipgrids back to her and they were very sincere. They felt very excited that she would even answer any of their questions. Um, let's see, I'm sorry, I wanna make sure I covered all of it. Um, I want you to not be afraid to reach out to people across the nation that you find on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, message them privately. I, I have a friend that's an artist illustrator and so this is near and dear to my heart because the book is dedicated to me and that's why, and she's my bestie. But it's important to me because the art project, um, this is before we were in virtual classrooms. She, my, I'm, she lives in New Hampshire. So we had a Google meet and she showed the kids how she makes the artwork for her stories. But more importantly than that, she sent them the actual story and had them edit for ELA. So this was all done online before we had to do it online. And so then um, it took a couple of years for this to be published. And then, but then I was able to send copies of the book to the kids who got their actual edits in the book. And so, you know, just by asking, what, what, do, you, what do you have to lose, right? Just ask. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show you in terms of tech is um, Screencastify. And that's how I make all of the videos that you'll see in the Google slide deck. And I actually don't know if I can do it live while I'm on Zoom, but Screencastify is a Google app. So if you'll recall, I said earlier, once you have a Google account, you'll have the waffle up on the right hand side of your page, which I don't think I have because I'm covering it up with this. And you can get this Chrome extension called Screencastify. Let's try it. I might not be able to do it while we're on, but if I do it, oh, it's gonna work. I can make a recording with my face. That's where I use webcam. I have a, I have a document camera that I'm using, not a camera on my, I have an old laptop with no camera. <laughs> I'm a tech person for the district and I have an old computer, right? That's how it is. Um, but I like to use the desktop feature and when I do that, I'll record everything on there and I can give kids explicit directions to what I want. So let's see if we can get it all done while we're on Zoom, maybe. Yes, I think we can. This is good, pretty fun. Okay, so we are now recording our screen live. Blah, blah, blah. Here's all our stuff. Isn't this so fun? And then I click end. And it's going to show me my recording and I can rename it up here. It's going to save to Google, Google Drive. It's very short, so it's going to save automatically. Um, I want to retitle it, of course. So I'll just say um, um, C-A-I-T-C Live, just so that I have it. Uh, I would, I would cut, I would trim all these things out if it were a real video, but I wanted to show you the great feature. It shares to your Google Drive. You can publish it directly to your Google Classroom. You can get an embed code to send to someone else or the best feature because anyone who has Google has YouTube. You have your own like, private YouTube channel. Is I will say publish to YouTube, but I don't want it private. I want it unlisted so that anyone with the link can view. I'll upload it and then I have this really short little YouTube link that I can send anywhere. I can send this link. Let's say I wanna talk about the forms that are due from school on something. I would record my desktop, copy the link, 
and then I have it. I could put it in Class Dojo for parents. I can put it on Google Classroom. I could put it in emails. Um, we have to use Dojo for parents. Remind, I can use it for Remind. That's what we had last year for sixth grade. And so um, that's a really great tool. Now on this tool, it's basic is free. And again, it's one of those um, that has a subscription service so that if you want it more deluxe, you have to pay more. Sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of crazy in that I pay for extra things because I make mistakes and I want to have a lot of options to keep re-recording. And then this is the end where I think, I hope I've taught you something. I don't know, but I do want to go back to this. Just remember about tech, like don't cry, no crying. Okay, there's no crying in tech. Always there are glitches. Keep them laughing in stitches and no witches. Great job, Julie. Woohoo! Gosh, so many tips to um, hold on to. I'm really glad that we recorded your presentation and we will be sharing that with everybody. Gosh. And then how would you like that? Um, I say it's in a, the slide deck can be a direct link or it can be yes. a PDF either. I can share those with you. Yes, I think, um, I think in a, in a PDF, um, and it will be on our site. Okay. So we'll, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's what works. Yep. I'm not the techie person. You did great with all your tech. Great I don't job. know. It was, I, I'll tell you the truth. I almost was crying this morning because I couldn't get the Facebook live to work and I couldn't get my other, the conference links to work, like everything. And then I said, what, what, why am I not laughing? That's right. Start no laughing. crying. No, this was great. You had great questions and comments. Everything was great. Um, there was one that said, how did Julie add the subtitles at the bottom of her screen? Oh, okay. I think that um, Browning's going to show, I didn't want to, I didn't want to take from another presenter, but I will just show you quickly. If you are talking about, um, uh, let's go back one. Can I go back one? I'm glad to sit here and talk with you. <laughs> here. So like, do you mean, how do I make these? Is that what they mean? Uh... These, are, these are hyperlinks. And so on any Google, um, for you like a Google doc or a Google slide. So let's just get one. I'll show you quickly how to do that. Don't look at my messy drive. Oh, both this and maybe the closed captioning. The closed captioning on, um, finish this. Yeah. When you're yeah, talking. Closed, yep. On closed captioning on ed puzzle is just a button that you push over. Oh, great. That's, uh, and th that's available on YouTube as well. So let's say that um, uh, I want to copy, um, okay, let's say I want to copy this uh, Everybody Dance Now song. I'm going to um, go to the, the um, URL, Control C will copy for you. And then on my doc or slide, I will choose insert and link. This works for Google. Okay, insert and link. I control V will paste. Whoops, I gotta be in there. Control V. Of course not. Triple V. Of course it's not gonna work right now. <laughs> anyway, if I put yep. it in there and then I put my title here, so um, dance video. I don't know why it's not, I don't know why nothing is working right now. See how this is? This is live. This is what's like real life. Yesterday yes. I had to give an assessment blew up in my face. I had to stop, but I just made a big joke of it. So there we go. Yep. Yep. Anyway, that's how you do it. You just insert link, you copy and paste your link there and you can give it whatever title you want. And once you hit apply that, it looks like, um, the blue. Okay. And Rita says, yes, the closed captioning on her zoom meeting. How did you make that happen? I think I, on the zoom meeting, Yes. I just choose that. I think I have that in my, um, we have to use Zoom for school. I think that's in my settings. Okay. I don't know if you have it at the bottom of your screen. So when you set up your Zoom account, you have a lot of options. Like 
like I had no chat for sixth grade at the beginning. <laughs> but um, you can set up closed caption, I think. That's how I have it. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. I think, let's see, it's, yes, the closed captioning on her Zoom meeting was live. How'd she do that? Okay, you just said that. It's in the settings. You have to set it up before the meeting. Everybody's so helpful. And uh, let's see. All right. With that, Julie. Thank perfect. you so much for having that me. That was great. You really added a lot of um, actual practical experience to the conference. And so thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Yes, you My have pleasure. a great, great day. Thanks. Thank you. You as well.